My name is Roger Maloney and welcome to the African American Women in Cinema Education Series. Man, we got a hot guest tonight. This guest is super, 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 super amazing. Lisa, this is how many supers I put in front of your name. Super, 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 super <laughs> amazing. The reason why she's so amazing, because tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about Costume Design 101. Um, once again, my name is Roger Mullen, CEO of Ufront Media. Ufront Media is a news platform where we interview uh, amazing entrepreneurs, um, people from entertainment and technology. And uh, I'm super excited about this one um, because I'm a huge movie buff. I'm a, and uh, when you figure out, and when I tell you, when I read her bio about the, the amount of people that she's worked with as a, a stylist and designer, uh, especially one of my favorites, um, Lisa, I'm a huge Bobby Brown fan. I'm, oh. I'm early Bobby. I'm, I'm Bobby, you know, with Whitney and I'm Bobby with Key Sweat in the versus battle. I'm, I was Bobby all day long. <laughs> Lisa, I'm so Bobby Brown. I tried to do the Gumby, had the flat top, Lisa, had everything. And I lost all my hair doing all that spray sheen and all that stuff, but that's cool. I got it. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, um, tonight is gonna be an amazing evening. I'm gonna ask Lisa um, two amazing questions. I'm gonna read her bio so you get an opportunity to see and hear all the amazing stuff that she's done and continue to do. And then after that, she'll do her um, presentation. And, and then we'll have 10 minutes for um, you can ask her questions. All right, is everybody good? Okay, um, so can let's begin. Can you see okay? I just wanna make sure. I can see okay. 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 I want it yellow because I figured, you know, cultural, the stylist icon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa, help me make sure I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Lisa Smedley? Yes, that's it. Got it, okay. Yes. Lisa Smelly is a cultural icon, stylist, designer who began her career in the 80s, creating pop culture as a stylist for album covers and videos and commercials for pop music talents such as Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown, D'Angelo, and many others. In the new millennium, she learned to focus uh, her skills in television and film, establishing herself as a lead costume designer, main buyer, and stylist one of her recent projects is a 2000 release of uh, Suspense Thriller, Karen, starring uh, Taryn Manning of Orange is the New Black, has created a buzz worldwide. Some of Lisa's other projects include Oscar-nominated uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, which is an amazing film, and the costumes were amazing in that. Yeah, that was um, uh, Charlize um, Antoinette was the costume designer, so I was, yes, worked with her, and that was an amazing project, yes. It, it really, actors were amazing, everything was amazing. Yes. Um, this, her historic story of Soul Train, an American Soul Multi Award nominated Gotti, starring John Travolta, that was amazing too. Uh, starring Diane Keaton, John Travolta, Kelly Preston, the TV series. Greenleaf, I love some Greenleaf. It was, yes. um, I binged the whole thing like overnight, like 10 hours straight. It was crazy, me and the family. Um, <laughs> and the upcoming TV series called Black Mafia Family. Uh, Karen Lisa is also known for her cultivating styles of unique um, styles for each client's personality while adding a hint of her own quirks. Her acute attention to detail marks her excellent touch. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Miss Lisa Spendley. Come on. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who is tuning in. I'm, I'm humbled. I'm super humbled. Yes. Thank you. We have an amazing uh, 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 audience tonight that are very excited to um, um, ask you some questions and to learn okay. more about costume design, styling, because a lot of people, Lisa, and it's going to lead into my first question, we watch films, but we don't know how much work it takes in television and music videos to actually make that, that, that cast uh, the artists look fabulous in those videos. We just take it for granted. And, right. um, and my first question to you is, what inspired you to get started as a stylist, designer, especially in the area of entertainment? Right, so um, grew up, um, I had a long story, but I'm gonna do the short version. Um, grew up with a mom um, who was a model. Um, she actually was a twin. Her and my aunt Joyce both were models in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I'm from. Um, so I had a love for fashion early on. My mom took me to all her modeling shows. So I was 
surrounded by fashion since I can remember, you know, magazines everywhere in my house. So um, long story short, um, I just knew that's what I wanted to do was always my passion. Moved to California, went to college, um, started working at Saks Fifth Avenue. Wow. Being, you know, you know, and I worked in Beverly Hills and I thought, oh, this is great. I worked on, you know, near Rodale Drive. I'll just style some celebrities at, you know, Saks Fifth Avenue and be the part of the Fifth Avenue Club. Um, long story short, a um, person that I was working with introduced me to a up and coming agent who was looking for new stylists. Um, and it was Krista Wright at the time. She loved my work. She was very much interested in grooming me to become into the, you know, to get into the industry. Had no idea that there was even a job like that that consists of, you know, doing music videos and things like that. I mean, I'm coming from Cincinnati. So, you know, as you can imagine, I didn't, the whole California aspect of entertainment and all that was very new to me. Um, so anyway, uh, Krista introduced me to Michelle Cole, who most of you guys would know is the costume designer for Blackish and Grownish. I mean, she was doing, she did like a living color. Like she was the first person I assisted. And um, so just from then on, I just started assisting her, started working with other people. Um, but basically I've always, always had a passion for fashion. Always. That was always just, I think in my blood, basically. Nice. Um, yeah. My second question for you is, Share um, uh, a time where you had the most difficult time styling an individual or a cast, and how did you overcome that? Because a lot of people think this thing is easy. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah, share, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on, on that particular part. Um, well, let's see. As far as the most difficult, I would say it was actually when I first, my very first artist, which was Chucky Booker. Um, he's the first artist that I worked with. And it was when I first started out and I had no book, you know, it was basically based on just, he just liked my ideas. And the director kept saying, you know, I don't think it's gonna work, you know, what you picked. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm it's gonna work. And he pushed me and he kept questioning me. And I coming, being new to this, I had to really, go deep down inside of myself and say, you know what? I got to really like stand my ground because this is what I like. This is what Chucky likes. This is what I know it's going to work. And, um, you know, at the end of the video, the director said, you know what? He pulled me to the side and said, you know what? You actually were right. That polka dot shirt did work. It was a video that I did for Chucky. So um, I would say that was my most difficult one. I think because I was learning how to really become sure of myself, to be confident, to, you know, because a lot of times in our business, which a lot of people who are listening, who are in this business will know, when you work with directors and different um, PR people and things like that, they will come to you and say, but kind of tell you what you need to do. I mean, they have a vision, but you as the fashion stylist and the costume designer, I mean, we already have a vision in our mind what we want to do. And so a lot of times we have to say, look, let us do our job. Let us do what we need to do. You hired me for a reason. I know what I'm doing. And so um, that was just a learning point, yeah, for me there, with that Chucky Booker video. Oh, wow. That's really, that's, and you know what? That's that's amazing because um, for those who don't know Chucky Booker, Chucky Booker has a hit called Turn Away. Yeah. I'm back in the days. I'm dating myself. Are you date? I'm dating myself too. <laughs> And it wasn't Chucky Booker the musical director for like Janet Jackson's tour back in the days and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, and he's yeah. also now doing um, music. I think he's the music director for Lionel Richie right now. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. So Lisa, I'm going to turn um, this session over to you. Um, and then let's time this out. Let's say by 7, uh, 7.30, 7.35. Okay. You'll stop and I'll open it up for anybody who has a question for you. So ladies and gentlemen, Lisa, the class is yours. Listen, it's so serious, Lisa. I got, look, I, I'm taking notes. Look, see, I even look, I've even got my notebooks out. Boom. It's not, I'm not even playing no game. Look. <laughs> I love it. So um, I guess I want to, first of all, say that, you know, in my industry, I've had a lot of people who have, I've looked up to. Um, a lot of the people that I looked up to as far as like costume designers have actually been the ones I've actually worked with, which is obviously Michelle Cole, who is just like, I love her to death. I still talk to her to this day and I still call her up and say, hey, can I get your advice on this? Um, when I 
transitioned from fashion styling into costume designing, I started first working with Janetta Boone, who um, gave me my first, I would say, costume buying job. You know, because you work your way up in, this, in, in the costume business. You um, usually become PA, then you kind of do set costuming, costume buying, you kind of work your way up. So I was a costume buyer for her for one of her movies. And then um, I worked with Rita, I worked with Shirley's Antoinette, who did, you know, costume design, obviously for Jews and the Black Messiah. And so a lot of the people that I've worked with have been, to me, even great inspirations in the way they work. And I've learned different things from them as well. So I've been very fortunate to work with some wonderful, great costume designers. And um, working with those costume designers, uh, talk about um, a little bit about working with artists. Now, everybody thinks, uh, everybody dreams about working with a music artist, styling them, and, and, and uh, how do you, um, like for working with Bobby Brown or D'Angelo, um, how did you come up with the different looks for them? Did they contribute to that? Did they not have a clue? What was the, what's the collaboration process like in that type of? So you know? for me, um, I, the first thing I usually do is when, let's say, for example, when I work with D'Angelo, the first thing I did was in Ralph Trez, but like all the artists I work with, even Chucky. Um, the first thing I do is I listen to their music. So I listen to their music and when I'm listening to their music, it kind of gives me an idea of just, you know, even with the lyrics, you know, I think about the, if I'm doing like to say a music video, I'm thinking about the music, I'm thinking about the lyrics, I'm thinking in my mind, oh, this would be good for this scene or this, you know, would be great look for him. Then, you know, I get to know the artist. I ask him, you know, what are your likes? What are your, like, what are your things you don't like? You know, what are the colors that you like? What are the things that you're comfortable in? Um, not comfortable in. I mean, sometimes I have artists who are like, do not get me you know, this particular color, I hate this color, you know, and then sometimes they'll just totally trust me. And, you know, even though they might hate something, I can talk them into it and say, you know, let's take a chance and, you know, just, but I have to know the artist first. So it's really getting to know the artist, asking them questions. Also, you know, I'm collaborating, of course, with the uh, record label, I'm collaborating with the director. And so I would say, that, you know, as a stylist, which a lot of people will know who style, that is always a big challenge because a lot of times they will conflict, you know, they will clash. So what the artist wants, the director might want something different. So it's up to me as the stylist to take everyone's opinion and ideas and make everybody happy. Oh, wow, that's really cool. When, um, what was it like working with, um Whitney Houston how do you style Whitney Houston people will get yeah. most most mortals will be intimidated trying yeah. to style Whitney Houston yeah. share your tips and thoughts on how you did that so Whitney when I first styled her it was for a music video my name is not Susan it was with uh director Lionel Martin who is just an icon to me and himself he started out he did basically every um r &B, act back in the 90s and he actually was um the inspiration for hype whims to do a lot of his things so um whitney was it's funny because everyone kept saying when you work with whitney she's going to be a diva you know be careful what you say to her how you speak to her and when i met her she was completely opposite of what everyone says she was going to be she was down to earth she was funny she was joking with me um and so that broke the ice in itself. So when I met her, I, we actually filmed her music video at her home in New Jersey. So even just coming to her home and being in her space, it was a little bit more not as, I would say, um, challenging to me because it, or I didn't feel as threatened to come because I was in her space. So, you know, we sat down, we spoke about her video, we spoke about there were some personal appearances she wanted me to do for her. And we basically just, you know, talked and talked and talked and Whitney liked to talk, first of all. So we talked and talked and talked and she just told me what she liked, what she didn't like. She was very direct, which, you know, was to be expected. And, um, you know, I think that was just another lesson for me that when people are saying, oh, this person is this way, 
that doesn't mean they're going to be that way with you. So like I said, everyone was saying Whitney was going to be a diva. She's going to be hard to work with. She was completely opposite of that, completely. And again, I mean, I knew what I wanted for her. I knew what the video was going to be. I, I knew exactly what she liked. Um, on that particular video, my name is not Susan. She really, it's funny because she, you know, she was known for doing the ball gowns and the elaborate dresses and, you know, very um, upscale contour, different things uh, like that of that nature. But for my name is not Susan, she actually wanted both. So she wanted the Whitney that we all knew, but she also, because at that time she was dating Bobby, um, she kept saying, I want to be hip hop. I want to be hip hop. I want that side to come out of me because that's the side no one had seen before of her. So we did a lot of things that a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, she had on the baseball cap channel. You know, I said, well, she really wanted people to see that side of her because honestly, that really was her real side, um, which is more of the hip hop side. And plus she's from Jersey. People forget that a yeah. lot. Yeah, she was the homegirl from Jersey, which a lot right. of people didn't know. I didn't know until I sat down and spoke to her. Wow. Yeah. Um, another question I want to have for you, D'Angelo, um, yeah. which video did you design? Was it the video, um, did you do the brown sugar video or was the video, um, but, but see, the D'Angelo video that got me in trouble, that had me put, put me in the gym was the video when he had his shirt off. Shirt off. Then, you know, my wife looking at me like, yo, homeboy, you need to jump in this gym because D'Angelo got no shirt on. So Lisa, which video did you? No, I did actually did not do his videos. I did his first, when he first came out, I did his CD cover, Brown Sugar. Ooh, that was a nice cover, Lisa. So when he, when his very first look for the world to see uh, is the CD, Brown Sugar is what I did for him. And that's, yeah, so I didn't. How does it feel? Thank you, Kimberly. How does it feel? Yes, that was how it feel. But I didn't do his videos. I did his, uh, his, I was nine months pregnant when I did his brown sugar CD. Actually, I was, yeah, about eight and a half. I was about to deliver my, I thought I was going to have my baby when I was out shopping in New York. But uh, I was nine months pregnant with Chris, my daughter. And um, so, right, I did his CD. And when they called me to do his video, I couldn't do it because I just had my daughter. So yeah, um, he was great working with D'Angelo. I mean, he was new, he was raw, he was talented. He was totally different from what people expected. Uh, he was great to work with. He's an amazing artist. I, I yeah. got a chance to see him live. The boy, the boy is nice, man. He could play multiple instruments. He could produce, yeah. he could sing. he's amazing. Yes. So wait a minute, you, let's highlight something. Hashtag Black Girl Magic. You did that nine months yeah. pregnant. Peggy looked at me and was like, she did a look. And she was like, you did that nothing most pregnant. Most yes, times, we don't even, if we have a stomach ache, we'd be like, oh, I can't come in today. That's a, yo, how did you? I was, that? and I was in New York doing it. And I remember it was cold. It was, it was, yeah. I was like, if I can do this and nine months pregnant, and it was like really cold and snowy in New York. And I was driving from, from Manhattan back to uh, Long Island, because at the time I was living in Long Island, because I was like, Lord, please don't let me have this baby on the <laughs> seat. But um, yeah, it was it was great. It was great work with him. Yeah, because I love what I do. So I think it just really didn't bother me that I was pregnant. I just, you know, I loved it. He was a great artist to work with. And so it wasn't something that was difficult or stressful for me to do. Um, that's an amazing story. I, I think that's an amazing story. Um, what I want to ask you next is I think a lot of people want to know, uh, is this something that people should go to school for? Or is this something that, you know, is a, we, we were having like pre-conversation before we went live. There's a young lady here who um, she designed her own fashion line and now she's doing full-time ministry. Um, is this something that you recommend people get the skills to do it from a college setting or they should just go out and just do it and, and test the water? So I went to, I did go to school. Um, I started out, actually, I started out at the Fashion Institute, and then I later went to Los Angeles Trade Tech. I went to both. So um, I feel like you should. I feel like the technical part is very important. If you, you know, depending on what you want to do. I mean, it's so many different genres in the fashion industry. I knew all along that I wanted to eventually go into costume designing. And when you're costume designing, you got to know, you know, you, you have to know about fabrics. You have to know about sewing. You have, there are technical things you have to know about that 
in order to really execute the look that you might want for the way you wanted to look on camera, you really need to know. So going to school, learning about textiles and fabrics and different things of that nature, I feel like it's extremely beneficial to you. Um, now, are there people who haven't gone to college and done great? Yes, of course. I, it's been, you know, I've known a lot of costume designers who've never gone to college. And, you know, so I think it really is a personal choice for you. I think it's, it's where you have to think about, you know, what do I feel like I need the most help with or the most um, uh, help with learning different skills with? For me, I always wanted to learn a technical side to it. So I wanted to know as much as I possibly, I mean, I'm still learning. So I'm always that person that wants to learn and learn and learn and ask questions. And I'm a person that when I am even shopping for people and shopping for different characters, like for my last movie that I just did, Karen, I'm touching fabrics. I'm looking at the, the how it looks on camera. I'm looking how it you know, how it feels on the, you know, the, on the um, actress, because I want them to be comfortable. I'm looking at it. Does it make noise on camera? Like, there's so many aspects to going to when you're shopping for a character for a movie. It's not just when you're fashion styling, you know, or you're getting something for red carpet, you know, you want them to be comfortable, but it's just, it's a kind of a moment thing. So you want them to look great for that moment. As with when you're doing a script and you're doing a movie, you know, you're actually creating a character and you're basing it on the script. And so there's a lot more things, you know, details that go into that when you're doing a movie. Wow, that's that's great. Thank you for sharing that. My next question for you is how Lisa, how did you um, pivot during the pandemic where you can't literally go visit clients, show them stuff? Yeah. Share with everybody, how did you pivot and, and, um, and um, still maintain the standard of excellence that you have as a designer during the pandemic? Yeah, uh, very challenging, but uh, thank God for Zoom. It was basically our lifesaver. I did, when I did the Karen movie, all our fittings were on Zoom. So when I did Taryn Manning, Corey and Jasmine, uh, all their fittings were on Zoom. So basically I had to... You know, I shopped for them blindly, of course, because I couldn't do any fittings with them at before shopping with them. Um, shop, with, shop the items for them, then I would drop it off. We would do a Zoom, they would try it on, I would look at it, and then if something didn't work, I would go back, you know, revisit it, and then shop again. I didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of fittings with them. I think we only had like, I think I had maybe two with Taryn. I think I had one with Corey and maybe one with Jasmine, but uh, yeah, it was all Zoom. Everything was with Zoom. Wow. And um, moving um, towards television, you worked on American Soul. What was that like? That was an, another amazing series that was, that was, that was really cool. Um, where did you get the uh, inspiration or the ideas to style that? That was, um, American Soul was, uh, the costume designer was Rita McGee. And I actually was a costume buyer for that. And so um, a lot of, obviously a lot of the, ideas and everything came from what Rita's vision was. And then she would show us mood boards. And then she, you know, we obviously I read the script first and then I, based on what Rita's vision was and me reading the script then I would go out and shop. And then um, Rita loved everything that I brought back, thank God. Um, she was great to work with. And um, so the story with American Soul was um, my uncle, was in the um, Soul Train Gang with Don Cornelius, Terry wow. Brown. Soul Train Gang, the first uh, the Don Cornelius did. Yeah, that was married to my mom's twin sister. And so um, that was actually a very close to my heart project because um, I met Don years ago when my uncle Terry was um, you know, working with him. So yeah, it was, uh, it was, it's funny because when I met Don Cornelius at 18, never thought, 20 some years later, we be doing a story about him. Wow, you met him at 18 years old. Wow. I was 18 when I met him, because that's when the Soul Train Gang, I think, came out. Because they only did one C uh, one album. And then after that, it, uh, the, the group dissolved. But wow. And talk about uh Gotti. That you know, that's that's John Travolta. Um, um playing John Gotti. How did I know how was it? What was your experience? on that set. Was, yeah, that was um, working with designer um, Olivia Miles. And that was when I first started 
transitioning to into working with movies. Wow. And it was actually the second movie I worked on. And oh my gosh, when you say how great is it to work on, you know, out of all the movies, you could do your second time working on a movie, you could work with John Travolta. I mean, you can't get any greater than you know John Travolta. Great to work with. We actually filmed Gotti in my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio, and great work with him. I mean, he was down to earth. It, again, another movie where I can't express enough that how much knowing the script is so important. Um, a lot of people, it's funny because even people that I talk to now who are not the designer, maybe they're like the set person or they're the shopper. They never really feel a need to read the script. And I'm always like, you have to, if you don't know your script, then to me, I, I, you, there, you can't go forward. You have to know a script. Um, so even as a buyer, I've always was like, I gotta read the script, I gotta read the script. And so reading the script, it was, you know, based in the 80s, of course, off of John Gotti, um, the um, mob person in New York, and a lot of uh, suits, a lot of old school 80 vibes. So yeah, I mean, it was right up my alley. You know, I, I was, you know, that's where I lived through the 80s. So it was great working with him. And um, the 80s had a lot of bright colors, Lee. So you know, for the 80s, it was... 80s was like you're right. In the, it was like a mixture of coming out of the 70s and we going into the going into the 90s. The 80s 80s was an interesting yeah decade. I right? love the 80s because I felt like everyone was super creative. The 90s too. I, you know, everyone was creative. Um, there was like just kind of like you were doing your own thing. It was a lot, a lot of bright colors. It was happy times. Happy right. music. You know, the shorter pads, the jewelry, the Doc Martens. I mean, it was, you know. Yeah. You remember Jody Watley that had the um, the ballerina skirt with the leggings with the sneakers? Yeah, Jody was in Shalmar, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Um, now, Greenleaf, I love some Greenleaf. The look of the the look of the series, how everybody dressed. How was how was it? What was your um, thoughts about working on that particular TV series because I love Greenleaf as a show Greenleaf. and the look of the show and the outfits they wore were amazing. Right. We, um, so I started out with um, Janetta Boone, who I love dearly. She has just been awesome and influential, influencing my career. I've worked with her on many, many, many projects. Um, she's a designer for, costume designer for Greenleaf. So I started out as a costume buyer and then she bumped me up to the assistant designer um, on that TV series. And working with her was great because Janetta taught me a lot of things as far as paying attention, you know, obviously to, to details and things like that, which was always something I already did, but even more so on the TV series we did. Lynn Winfield um, knows what she wants. She knows what she likes, um, as well as the other cast. But so it was, you know, if you, as you said, you've seen Greenleaf. Everyone had their distinct look based on their personality. You know, Lynn was known for the kimonos and the beautiful, you know, we did a lot of um, Lafayette with her. Um, that was one of the designs we did with her a lot. Um, and then you had, you know, Zora, the girls, you know, they were more trendier. So everyone kind of had like their own niche. So I loved it because I loved the fact that every character had their own look and it was very distinctive so it's kind of like when you saw lady may you knew she was going to have a kimono you knew she was going to be monochromatic usually with her you know with the colors that she used um so yeah it was great working with them i love that was actually one of my favorite projects was working on i actually missed that show i wish it would come back so yeah. it's an amazing show it was an amazing show and everybody looked amazing especially angie wyans um, transition from you know Wyan's family getting playing the Deborah uh, Wyan. Yeah. Wyans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that was Debbie Wyans. Yeah, Debbie Wyans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next thing I want to ask you is about Judas and the Black Messiah. I watched this movie three times because one, I love the story was powerful. Um, the look of the the look of the film was amazing. The because that was. Um, that took place in what time period? That was uh, 70s? Was like the 60s to the early, early 70s. Late okay. 60s to 70s, yeah. The Black, yeah. Share, okay. share your thoughts on what was it like working on that project? So that was, wow. That, um, first of all, I can't thank Shirley's Antoinette enough because she was a designer who brought me on that project. 
And she um, worked, I mean, obviously you saw the, you know, the design, she did an amazing job. Um, she, again, knew what she wanted. She had a vision. Um, I love the 60s and 70s. I love that period. And it was a lot, a lot of shopping and a lot of, you know, um, collaborating with um, Charlize about, you know, exactly what she wanted as far as the colors and the patterns and making sure, you know, one thing I loved about working on Juice and the Black Messiah is that, you know, when you think of the Black Panthers, you just think of just the Black Beret and the Black Turtleneck. And it was so not just that. I mean, Charlize did an amazing job with executing you know, the style of not just your typical black beret and black turtleneck and, you know, black pants and black leather jackets. She really um, wanted to show more of a different side of the Black Panthers. And so we did a lot of vintage shopping. I mean, I think, oh my gosh, we must have shopped at the vintage costume houses from LA to Chicago. Like, wow. I shopped everywhere. I was calling people. I was driving to land. I was driving. I mean, we were all over the place um, doing vintage. It was all vintage. Most, I think there, there were some pieces that we made custom, but mostly it was vintage. So I loved it. Wow. That was amazing. I, th I, thought, that, I, thought, I thought the look at that and, the, and you, the time period and the clothes will look amazing. Um, the leather jackets was off the hook too. Those black leather jackets. Where did you find those black leather jackets? Oh, wow. That was... <laughs> Yeah, those were, I know Charlize found a lot of them in California. I found a lot, believe it or not, there's a place in Cleveland that had um, wonderful, it's a costume house in Cleveland and in Cincinnati, Ohio, that I found some great vintage leather jackets. It's a place in Cincinnati where he literally just has a huge warehouse and I have to dig through boxes and boxes of clothes. And then it's kind of like when you find it, you know that's what you want to use. Um, but yeah, it's really just kind of getting out there and having a vision in your mind of what you were looking for and just knowing when you see it. You know, sometimes I'll be out looking for things for Shalise and it might not be anything we were even thinking about, but I'll find it. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the work, you know? So yeah, it's a lot of vintage shopping, tons, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, last question before I open up to, to everybody to chime in is you, how do people, there's a lot of people nowadays shifting jobs, shifting careers, right? There are people probably on here is like, you know what? I'm tired of working in this little cubicle. I really want to get into like fashion buying. Could you share some insights on how people can get into that field um, or, or just becoming a, a styler, um, designer and um, what, what should they do first? Well, first, I would say make sure it's definitely something that you absolutely have a passion for and would love to do. Um, it is long, long hours. You know, like you said in the beginning, most people don't see the behind the scenes. They only see the outcome. So they're not seeing those long hours that we're working. They're not seeing, you know, um, no, the days that we don't get any sleep and that, you know, sometimes I don't see my family for, you know, months and weeks at a time. Um, it, it's a lot, a lot of hard work, but if you love it and you feel like that's your passion, then you kind of look at it as, you know, just, it comes with, you know, the course. Um, I would say, you know, depending on what you're looking for, I mean, with fashion styling, you know, I started assisting, you have to assist. I think we're at a day and age where a lot of younger people, don't want to, you know, start at the bottom. They just kind of want to just jump into it and start now. And I, I'm a firm believer that you have to assist, you know, doing internships, assisting, you have to know the, the, the rules and the, just the basic rules of, you know, different aspects as far as styling, even just a genre, as far as like, you know, uh, what you're doing with different characters, when you're doing costume designing. Um, you, you know, most people start as a PA. I never did PA work, um, but it, you know, just depends on, you know, what show you're on. But I feel like you should also know when you're becoming a costume designer. I mean, I did costume buying, I was on set, I did key, so I've done everything, worked my way up to costume designing. So now that I am a costume designer working on my own movies, then I have appreciation for what everyone else is doing because I know what it takes to do that. So I always feel like that's important. So I think if, you know, if you're really interested and in, let's say that if you wanna be a fashion stylist, you know, look up some of the styling, you know, people that you admire, you know, call them up, you know, DM me. I mean, 
at this day and age, most young people or, you know, people who want to be in this business, they have the best thing, which we didn't have in my age. Uh, at my age was now you have Instagram. So you can DM people and you can send right. them messages. I mean, there's really, you have so much information and so many ways of getting in contact with people. I mean, we didn't have email back then. Right. So thing I did was literally calling people and trying to, you know, meet them face to face. So I would say, call them up, ask them, can you assist them? Ask them, can you internship with them? And, you know, eventually the doors were open and, you know, work your way up. Nice. And Lisa, you, have you ever noticed, I mean, I stay on TikTok um, because Lisa, I got two girls, so I got to stay on TikTok, uh, 15 and 12. Um, have you noticed there's a, been a lot of challenges um, uh, and, and a lot of challenges are uh, people just experiment with different cool looks and and do you um, gather some of your inspiration from social media now that you mentioned Instagram and TikTok? No, I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> I just... All right. I'm still old school. I, I, I am still old school where, yes, Instagram is huge. I mean, in fact, I mean, I'm still learning Instagram, though, I have to say. Um, but I'm still old school where I'm actually buying magazines and I'm going to like what magazines are you buying Lisa oh what my you God. I'm buying every magazine you could think of from like you know well obviously you're you're the, the bible which is the Vogue magazine and you know but I'm buying Vogue from Italy and Germany and Greece and all the different countries and I'm looking at you know um magazines from all like all over across the world from you know right. from Europe from Mexico you know because I want to see you know what are they doing in Mexico what are they doing in you know Europe so um, I'm old school. I'm, I buy tons of magazines. And you and clip, are you are you cutting them out and clipping them and putting them on the board? Huh? Yes. Even when I'm not working on a project in my spare time, I'm looking at magazines. I'm I go to Barnes and Noble sometimes, and I'll look at I'll read you know different fashion books on history. I love going to museums and looking. I mean, sometimes I'll go to museums and just look at the you know the clothes from you know the '60s and the '50s and the '40s. Wow. You know? Um, I love exhibits like that. I, I feel like I'm, because I love it so much, I'm constantly emerging myself with knowledge of just the history of fashion. And because for me, it's just something I'm mesmerized by. I mean, to this day, I, there's so many designers that I'm so mesmerized by, you know, like Bob Mackey and just all these, you know, designers from a long time ago that did, um, you know, the old movies. Like I love old Hollywood movies. I've watched old Hollywood movies. I love the way they, you know, they did their styling back then. I thought, you know, so many, they were so glamorous. It was so glamorous. So that's what I do a lot of. Yeah. Wow. I do <laughs> in my spare time. I'm glad you said you still read, you know, so check out magazines because um, uh, a lot of people don't say that no more. A lot of people like they'll, they'll watch the, the challenges and say, oh, this is a cool look. Oh, they'll look on Instagram. Oh, this is a cool look. I'm so glad you said you still cut out magazines. That's cool. I do. I really, I mean, I look at Instagram too. I mean, Instagram is a huge, huge uh, tool to use for, you know, when I'm looking for a certain look, I mean, that is the quickest way to find something. You know, you just type in the name, you can find something. Um, but I, I love magazines because, you know, you could cut out, you know, when I'm doing my mood boards, it's just for me and for the director sometimes, if I want to present him with a board, not so much on sometimes I have directors feel like can you just bring me a board they don't want it on you know on the internet they don't want me to send it to them they want to show it to them right. so I didn't miss that I missed that face-to-face -face meeting with someone you know everything right now is just email me let's do zoom um which I know is a lot easier obviously because of COVID now too we have to do it but I do miss you know when I first started out everything was face-to-face -face, and it was way more intimate and more personal Wow. Lisa, I'm going to um, open it up, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to open it up for questions. So if you have a question um, for, for Lisa, um, uh, please unmute yourself. You can ask a question at this time. Feel free. I'm going to stop talking. And because um, I have, I could go on for another 15 minutes and pick in a break. Um, so if anybody has a question they want to ask, feel free to ask it at this time. Uh, Peggy, do you have a question? Kimberly, do you have a question? Jerry, do you have a question? Nikki, if you have a question, please feel to unmute yourself and, and ask it at this time. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Roger. Um, I am not in the industry. However, Lisa, this is Jay Pick on Instagram. 
So I wanted to, I wanted to come out to support you and uh, j just the things that you've been saying, we are just like soulmates, magazines, you know, just the music inspiration and how you go about, you know, approaching a client, an artist. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do the same thing in my industry, which I'm in education and um just the things that you've shared today we've got some catching up to do yeah. so i am waiting on you to come back to chicago and we are going to just elaborate a little bit more but i just wanted to just reach out to you like i said i'm not in the industry guys but i just wanted to reach out and just let her know that i'm here to support her and i loved everything that you've just shared thank you thank you you're welcome thank you peggy that's a thank you're you welcome so, so and, i um so just to tell you real quick, a quick note. I this is how great Instagram is. I actually met JPEG on via Instagram. I'm not sure even how we started talking. We literally just started talking and saying how many things we had in common. And now we're just like best friends via Instagram, but we never met. And so Instagram, like I said, it's a wonderful do. I mean, I met another wonderful costume designer, Mandy Line, who is she did like, oh my God, well, she just did the bow tie and then she did Pretty Little Liars. Like she's awesome costume designer. We've been talking on Instagram and I've never met her personally, but like we're super supportive of each other. So again, Instagram is a great tool if, when you're trying to meet people for sure. And thank you so much for sharing that because um, you can definitely build networks yeah. and, and long-term friendships um through instagram as well and then you could find out that you you know people that you meet you guys may have the same vision and drive and stuff like that and that's how you could build um job opportunities connections and networking kimberly has a question her question is for you lisa is where do you see the future of fashion and the evolution of the culture intertwine she says where do, how, where do you see the future of fashion going and the evolution of the culture intertwine Okay, is that my cousin Kimberly Thornton? You know that's Kimberly Thornton. <laughs> she would have asked me stuff. <laughs> Kimberly, Kimberly, go matrix questions on you. I love it. Kimberly, yes. Yeah, Kimberly. The the uh, okay. So um, I, as far as fashion, the future of it, you know, I think people are really trying to get more back into the basics. I think people are becoming more aware of just dressing more so for themselves and not so much following a trend. I feel like that's what we're trying to get back to. Um, I know people are getting more conscious of the way they dress, even as far as like doing, you know, consignments and secondhand dress, you know, secondhand stores and vintage, because, you know, there's a concern with, you know, the, with all the waste with the earth. So I think it's more, thought about now, I think it's going to, I, at least that's what I'm hoping. I feel like a lot of people are thinking about more about what they want to do as far as like their, how they want to spend their money, I would say, as opposed to just looking great or thinking about, you know, you know, um, to just come from a place where people were underpaid, you know, um, as you can see, you know, is, is it black owned? Um, so I think it's a lot more conscious thought going into fashion now. Um, and being supportive of each other. And um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's, I, I feel like that's the way we've been going so far, especially with everything going on in our, you know, in our world. Hope that answers your question, Kimberly. I think it did, because she's, oh, I think you did. You answered Kimberly's question. <laughs> uh, and my, I have something to throw out. What did, um, who are some of the Black designers that you like? Oh, wow. Gosh. Um, well, I, when we were on, when, when I did Karen, I used Forward Style, who does purses. Um, I did, is it, oh gosh. There was another girl who I used, um, or of course, Charlize Antoinette has her own gold jewelry. She does gold jewelry. She's the one who did custom designer for Black Massage. She has her own jewelry line. Um, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, pronouncing it right, Miso, Miso House, I think that's her, I think that's how you pronounce it, forgive me if it's not right, but I have her earrings on now, so she's Black designer too, um, 
Brian, Brian Lars. I mean, there's a lot of black designers that I try to use and that, um, you know, like when I did Karen and even when we did Greenleaf, I mean, that was definitely always uh, something that we purposely wanted to make sure that we, you know, venture down and look for black designers to support each other. Lisa, I have another um, question for you. Um, I've been watching Michelle Obama um, and her style from when, when she first started to now. And especially when she came out, do you remember when she came out the inauguration and she yeah. had that purple and she looked like a Jedi? You remember that outfit? That outfit was fierce. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like, like um, I love it. how do you, how do you, um, cause you know, when people are first starting out in the business, and then they evolve. It's like, do you feel yourself literally educating the person on how to dress? Because you know, sometimes when people artists get signed or you're working with a new client, um, do you give like tips to them on the low, just to you know, and do they ask you stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, usually I do. You know, when I was working, you know, I mean, when I was working for Ralph Tresvon and Bobby, obviously they kind of already had a style of their own. Um, but I am giving tips. I am, you know, there's some things that I'm like, mm, I don't know if you should continue. I know you've been wearing this, but let's, you know, change it up. Um, when I work with Color Me Bad, you know, I don't know if you remember when they first started out, but they kind of first started out very bubble gummy, very colorful. I, mean, I was getting, you know, I start. I gave them an image of everything was very colorful, very bubble gummy. And then as their music changed, a little bit of their style changed too. So it got to be a little bit more urban um they started doing more like designer like i was introducing them to dolce cabana and you know pro romani so you know as their music started to change and as they got more um known in the industry um they began wearing more upper scale designer um you know attire as well so yeah you know and you know it, it depends on how their music is changing I me mean, sometimes they go backwards and dress down you know sometimes they're like starting out really really you know designers and then all of a sudden they're like oh i just want to do a t-shirt and jeans now you know i'm kind of like in that vibe so it kind of depends on the vibe they're in it kind of depends on their music i mean it just a lot plays into that thank you for sharing that now does anybody have any further questions before we wrap up um and if you do, just, you know, please chime in or you can unmute yourself and just ask anything. Going once, going twice. Tara, do you have a question for Lisa? Big shout out to Tara Renee, um, uh, who is the founder CEO of African American Women in Cinema, who for the last couple of months, we've been finding amazing guests. And Lisa, you, you listen, you're on the Mount Rushmore of one of our amazing guests because I li you had me in a collection. I literally started, do you, are, do you, are you guys the people that literally lay out your outfits on the bed and you start mixing and matching them? Because uh, even in Zoom calls, right? You gotta make sure you, you know, you looking fly from the top. That's right. <laughs> to the ways. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing now, Lisa. It, is. it really is. And give me your advice to um, young people that like from, that are just coming out of college, high school, a lot of young people feel like um, they want to keep their same look in corporate and um, uh, and outside. And give some advice to some young people that just need a couple of fashion tips. Because you walk around the streets, you see what's happening. People coming in, um, Peg, you can testify to this. They come into the job interviews looking like on the video. Some things work fly for the video, but some things don't work fly for the video. Can you please give people some tips, Lisa? So, number one, you're not an artist. <laughs> Uh, you know, the way an artist dresses on a video is not everyday life. I promise you, you know, they, you might think that, but it really isn't. It's, it's a music video. Um, a lot of times the stuff that they even have in the music videos is not even things that they own. You know, we're renting things from the, you know, showrooms and we're borrowing things. And so it's not even usually sometimes things that they even own. But um, I would say, you know, definitely look the part. So, you know, if you're going for a job or interview, please wear, you know, take the time out to go get your suit tailored and altered and, you know, take the time out to steam it and wear a nice tie. I mean, just look the part, look like you have confidence, you know, and, you know, when you walk into the room, it's, it's the, the truth. The truth is, is that the old saying still is true, where when you walk into a room, your look speaks for itself. It's just like, you know, when you're doing costume design, you know, when you're looking at a TV show or movie and you see that character in 
a look. It is telling you a description of that person before they even speak. So it's the same with in real life. You know, if you're going for a job interview or whatever you're doing, you know, look the part, you know, look the part, look confident. Um, you want people to take you seriously. Lisa, thank you so much. This was a massive class on, uh, first of all, salute to you in your, everything that you've done in your career, uh, all the people that you influence. And, and a lot of times, again, people don't see you, um, see fashion as a, as, a, as a key part of any film or music video, but it truly is. And the work that you're doing is truly amazing. Thank you so much for taking time out your busy schedule. Um, and one day I'm going to sh share about the behind the scenes conversations me and Lisa was having because we literally have five minute conversations. You got it? Yeah, I'm good. Cool. Yeah. Bang. Good. <laughs> yeah. And um, Lisa, shit. Go ahead, Lisa. I was going to say, my, I have my movie, Karen, is coming out on August 13th on BET. Um, Karen Manning. And um, yes, the, you know, based on Karen, which, as we know, the, the Karen um, that's, you know, being talked about all over. So that comes out on August the 13th. It's starring Karen Manning and Corey Hardwick and Jasmine Burke. And um, also I wanted to say that the dress that I have on is actually a Black designer, Sammy B out of New York. So yes. I want to throw that because yeah, she gave me, yeah, uh, sent me this dress. I love this dress. And thank you to um, African American Women in Film for having me. Thank you to Kimberly for having me. Thank you to you. I, I'm just, thank you to everyone who is listening. Um, very humble that even one wanted to come in listen to me speak. <laughs> so thank you. Share, share your social media. How can people reach out to you if they have further, you know, advice or questions they want to yeah. just reach out to you? Please do. Yes. If you have any questions, you can, my Instagram handle is Lisa underscore loves underscore fashion underscore. And my email is fashion styling by Lisa at gmail.com. And Hello. I am uh, Roger Maloney, and this I'm the host of the African American Women in, in Cinema Education Series. Um, please check out our website, www. I, sorry, African American Women in Cinema org for more information. We do this every last Friday of the month on the 30th, and look out for uh, another amazing guest that we have. But listen, if you didn't figure out what to wear, how to wear it, where to school for it. And, um, and and please support Lisa and all her projects. Please check out Karen um, and share, share, share this information, share all her stuff. And um, Lisa, thank you so much, buddy. This was so dope. Thank you to everyone for, for who, who joined in. Thank you, Roger. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you. All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Good night. Right. Thank you.